going to the final four. The following is a Learfield presentation of the Oregon Sports Network. And Oregon is going to play in the national championship game. This is Duck Insider. We need to get community. We need this thing to be bigger than just our little circle of players and coaches. Are you kidding me? Touchdown, Oregon. With two seconds on the clock, he hits it. That's the bigger picture in this thing, allowing the community to celebrate the hard work, blue-collar mentality this group brings to the table. And the Ducks have won it. The Ducks have won. We get to struggle together, and we get to have joy together. Dante will dribble it out. The Ducks are Pac-12 Tournament Champions! I am so proud right now to be the head coach at Oregon. Oregon's a Fiesta Bowl champion in a 12-win season. This is Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Presented by On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Now let's go live to the Country Financial Studio to talk Oregon Duck Athletics. Duck football on the practice field today. We've got some interviews afterwards. Drew Merringer, Duck tight end coach, tight end Kenyon Sadiq. Also Kobe Savage, a new defensive back and new quarterback Dante Moore meeting with the media today. We have yet to even get to a Johnny Cornelius, Keon Ware Hudson, Amari Washington and Tatum Tuioti and Mateo Uyunglele. So we have a ton of spring football interviews for you today. Shout out to Duck Baseball, the bounce back win last night. Great to see that. Four home runs, a season-long start for an Oregon pitcher. Ian Umlant went seven. Ducks absolutely needed that. Shout out to Ian Umlant for a great performance. Softball got a win last night as well. And Jess Drummond, Oregon lacrosse head coach, joins us today before they travel to San Diego this weekend. Also of note, Happy Masters Thursday to all of those who celebrate, huh? You know, it's the greatest post-victory look, post-victory prize. It's a green jacket. I didn't wear green today. I work at the University of Oregon, and I didn't wear green today on Masters Thursday I will, no, I wore, well, I wore a different dark, I guess, yeah, Scott's right. I wore like a dark green, I don't know. I, the Masters green, it's 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 closer to the Oregon apple green, you know. Anyway, maybe on, on Sunday it'll be a green Sunday for Masters Sunday. Welcome to Duck Insider. We're going to hear from a few Oregon football student athletes to kick things off today. Uh, and, of course, Jess Drummond is always a good time. Full disclosure, talked with Coach Drummond yesterday. Wednesdays work the best for her. She was hilarious. Uh, yeah, you're going to want to stick around for that. Let's talk offensive line. Uh, Johnny Cornelius earlier this week, he met with the media talking about uh, where the Ducks have developed, how practice has been going, a lot to cover with a Johnny Cornelius to kick us off today. What are some of the things you're looking to work on here in the spring? Uh, in the spring, um, just working on uh, getting the chemistry of the offense uh, going is really exciting because we have a lot of great new players and just seeing how we can all uh, mesh together and play as one. What's so, it like so far trying to build that chemistry with Bedford in particular? Honestly, honestly, it's been really fun. I've had a chance to play next to him, and he just brings a lot of liveliness and juice to the room. He, he's definitely a blast to play next to. What was, uh, what was the offseason plan for you? For me? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to get a little bit stronger. That was uh, one of my goals and just maintain my athleticism through that. And I feel like I've done a good job at that and just want to maintain that uh, through the rest of spring and summer. You look bigger. You had some uh, weight? <laughs> yeah, no, I'll put on just a little bit of weight. Yeah, so definitely definitely moving towards my goal. You mentioned lots of new players on offense. Who are some of the people who have really stood out? Uh, d definitely in the quarterback room, you got uh, Dylan and Dante, both really uh, really smart QBs to have, to have around. I've been really impressed with Dante. I've been able to uh, play with him. And uh, Dylan, too, he's, uh, he he's a really good quarterback. And he's really funny, too. He has a great sense of humor. So it's just really fun guys to have around. And also, um, uh, new receiver, Evan, he's been pretty good, too. So Are there any differences in pass blocking for a lefty versus a righty? Just being the blind side blocker? Oh, yeah, just in, uh, just in general? Uh, well, I'm still on the right side, but uh, but just being on the blind side? Yeah. Uh, I would say, yeah, you, you just uh, you just want to be extra cautious because you know he's not as aware. So uh, just definitely being firmer in the sets and uh, being strong at, at, the, at the point of attack, for sure. A year ago, it seemed, you know, looking back on a year ago, your confidence and comfortability seems to have grown a lot. Does it feel that way in spring? And what do you think? Um, have, how, how has that allowed you to kind of develop a little bit more being in your second year under Dan Lanning? 
Definitely. Um, I say obviously last year I was going to a new program, so just establishing that. But you know, as I, I've gotten to know my teammates and, and the coaches, they, they've all given me the the confidence and um, you know, inspiration. It just continue to grow, for sure. So definitely more confident. Feel like you're able to be a little bit more vocal. Uh, absolutely, and and that, that's one thing I want to focus on too is being vocal and being a leader for the guys in the room, especially the young guys. You know, we got a lot of uh, new young players in the old line room, so I want to be a leader for those guys. Steven was such an important piece for your offensive line, but also just this team, the culture of this team. How do you guys go about replacing what he meant on and also off the field for you guys? And that's a great point. Steve was huge for us last year. And I think uh, part of him leaving was establishing that standard. So me playing next to him all year, he, he really uh, he really made me understand what it means to be an uh, Oregon offensive lineman. So he just handed that to me, and I'm going to carry that on for him. What, what were the things that he, he said to you that it means to be an old lineman here? Oh, we're always first to do everything. You, you always want to get in there first to pick the guys up off the ground. Uh, re really toughness overall, not not showing weakness. And um, he was just a, a true example of that, for sure. How have you seen Poncho kind of grow into playing center? There's a lot of things that go with that. How has he kind of stepped into that? What's it called? Poncho has been amazing. I, I, honestly, he's so adaptable. You, you, you really just put him anywhere, right guard, uh, left guard, center, wherever we need him, he's going to go. So what's it called? He, he, he's uh, continuing to get confident, and he's doing a great job. Who are some of those guys working behind you at right tackle? So Kavika take some reps there. It looked like George may have been there. Who else is in that mix? Yeah, you got uh, Kavika. He's been doing a great job too. Is uh, it's, it's real fun to see all the guys uh, back out at spring ball. We're, we're finally playing, uh, putting on pads again. Uh, also, Big Shaq. Uh, that's what we call him. Um, uh, Jawan. He's doing he's doing really good. And uh, him just you know continuing to build his confidence. But he's huge. He's massive. He's doing a good job. Have any of the, the younger defensive linemen kind of impressed you so far during spring? Uh, I said Amari Washington, definitely. He's been doing a great job. It's good to see him. We got a, a lot of guys on the D-line that have been uh, been striving. Uh, Michael, he's been doing really good too, so for sure. Growth in year two of the Will Sign offense. Where's the growth that you want you guys want to see in on Will's, Will's offense in year two? Uh, growth, um, like I said, r really right now, we're just continuing to find our, our, our identity with the new group and the new players. So I feel I feel like that'll come eventually. What do you think the identity will be? We'll see, but it's looking good. From your point of view, just what excites you the most, kind of that you've seen so far this spring about the offense? Like, like I say, the overall energy of everybody uh, who came in this year, like everybody's just ready to get to work, and it, uh, it's, it's real inspirational. I'd say so. Everybody's motivated. I just say the energy and the juice of the group. There's a lot of new players, just like you were kind of last year coming in from all different places. Just how have you guys really focused on that connection and make sure that that is kind of at the focal point, especially, you know, under a new quarterback, a new leader going to be the season? That's true. Um, I, I said we hang out a lot. Uh, Dylan, he, he made sure to take us all out to eat the, the whole line. And uh, we really appreciated that. Uh, Matt, he's always grilling at his house. He's barbecuing. Everybody's over there. So I say we're definitely working that chemistry off the field, too. That connection. So let's revisit that. Dylan Gabriel. Transfers in, new starting quarterback. What does he do? He takes his offensive line out to eat. Dylan Gabriel, that's a veteran move from Dylan Gabriel. Well done. Well done. Heard from Dylan Gabriel yesterday. Going to hear from Dante Moore coming up. Now, though, to the defensive side earlier this week, Keon Ware Hudson, who I feel like maybe gets underappreciated over his career and on the defensive line, has really eaten up a lot of blocks in his career. I think poised for maybe a big season. Keon Ware Hudson talking with the media. Spring football practice interviews continue. What have, you, what have you seen out of the younger defensive linemen so far through spring camp? I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of uh, improvement from practice one to practice three right now, or four right now. So um, i see improvement within, like, the film room and on the field, too. You know, they're asking questions and taking that – what well, we asked him on the field. So, where are you, where are you repping right now? What am I repping? Yeah. Well, like where, where on the line are you repping? You feel like a, a detacker? You move Yeah. Those? Everything, from from zero all the way out to five. It's good. So zero all the way to five. You know, position flex and everything. So. Why was it important to you, like last year, to stay like in this world? Mm. The minute that somebody doesn't play, they transfer. Yeah. And you had a room of yeah. all older veteran guys, some of them, a lot of them with kids, married. But you chose to stick around and know that your role was going right. to be what it was and did well with it. Right. But why was it important to you to stay then, and, and how do you look forward to this opportunity now? Uh, I'm just not a guy that runs away from competing. You know, that's that's something that I, my family, you know, breeds about. And, you know, I'll never get a run away from competition. 
And plus, it was with my boys, you know, and it was the last one. So, you know, I can't leave away just because of um, my own situation. But, you know, I felt like it was the right fit. Still get my reps. Whenever I, I get that, that call, you know, do, do every what I could do. So, What does it mean to you to be one of those last guys from yeah. I think it's you and Pat. And then right. from the next group, it's, you know, Marcus yeah. and Dante and Jeff's in there. But mm -hmm. otherwise, it's like seven or eight of you guys. Yeah. That's about it. I think it's only me and Pat from the 19 class. Yeah. But you now it feels crazy. He feels, I feel like we already know everything, the ins and outs of this this program and everything. So, you know, we have the younger guys that ask us questions throughout. So, you know, try to get back to them. What's the point of attack stuff that you're focused on here in the spring? Uh, definitely just my hand placement, my footwork, you know, try to increase my play on that. Um, you know, pass rushing us too. You know, converting on pass from running pass. So, you know, I try to emphasize on that a little bit. As a veteran guy, what's it like being in a room with, with so many young players? I mean, yeah. half the room at least is teenagers. Right. Now it feels crazy. I heard someone that was born in 2006. I was like, <laughs> I was six years old by then. But, you know, it feels good at the same time because they know I have experience from playing. So, you know, I give them feedback on questions they ask and, you know, what can improve their game when I was as a freshman asking like Pat Mack and yeah. Austin and them, so. What have you seen from Jamari so far? And yeah. What's, what's he added to the room? Yeah. Uh, size. He's a big man to move, and he, he's quick too. And I feel like that's what most guys underestimate on him. He could go B to A real quick. Um, he's real light on his feet, you know, twitchy guy. Were you able to either during spring break or after spring put in time with like I know Eddie's working mm -hmm. in a different role yeah. now, but so yeah. I don't know if you still have somebody you're working with or yeah. Um, I wasn't working with anyone. I had uh, Taki Tamani here working with me, so he's giving me things that he's been looking up on and getting like coach from other guys. So, you know, try to pick his brand a little bit and, you know, that's it. Give me goals specifically, Keon, for where a year from now you're in you're in a position like those guys to mm -hmm. to feel positive and like you're in an advantageous spot come the draft next year. Yeah, I mean right I got my personal goals and you know, I got my team goals, but that's more focused on the team goals and having our accomplish what we want to accomplish this year, you know. That's Keon Ware Hudson talking with the media after practice earlier this week. And when we come back, uh, talking a little bit of quarterback play, also Jess Drummond with some lacrosse updates and baseball with a bounce back win. A lot more coming. It's Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. As a local community credit union founded by teachers, On Point is committed to supporting the students and faculty at the University of Oregon. And on game day, we're right there with you on the field, in the bleachers, and in the classrooms. Drop by our local branch today and discover the many ways On Point can help support your financial well being. On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Hey, Duck fans, we're all about protecting our home turf here in Eugene. You should do the same for your home with Country Financial Insurance. Most home insurance doesn't account for inflation, but with Country Financial, yours can. If something happens to your home, make sure you can rebuild the same house in the same place. Call a local representative or 866-COUNTRY and get a solid defense for your home. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Casualty Insurance Company, or Country Preferred Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Property must meet aging condition requirements, which vary by state. Don't go anywhere. Duck Insider continues after these messages on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. From Learfield. The possibility of lung cancer can be pretty scary, especially if you're one of approximately 8 million current or former smokers at high risk. That's why SaveByTheScan.org wants you to know that now there's a breakthrough low-dose CT scan that can detect lung cancer early, and it only takes 60 seconds. You stop smoking, now start screening. For an easy quiz to see if you're eligible, visit SaveByTheScan.org. It could save your life. SaveByTheScan.org is brought to you by the American Lung Association's Lung Force Initiative and the Ad Council. Into the building for the first time after the shooting, it was crippling, but it had to be preserved. In response to the Pulse nightclub shooting that affected the LGBTQ community, Barbara Poma, owner of Pulse, founded the One Pulse Foundation to honor Pulse victims and survivors. If you're an ally of this community, speak out. There are more of us together than apart. It is the power of love in its rawest form. Join the fight for LGBTQ acceptance. Learn how 
at lovehasnolabels.com. Brought to you by Love Has No Labels and the Ad Council. Back inside the Country Financial Studio, Duck Insider, always presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Johnny Cornelius, Keon Ware Hudson, and then right off the practice field today, Dante Moore. Heard from one quarterback in Dylan Gabriel yesterday. Now another new addition to the roster, and I think it's interesting to point out. Dante Moore, although a young guy, an underclassman, certainly played a lot of football in the Pac-12 conference already when he was at UCLA. Gives him a unique perspective. One of the themes after practice today, and actually Rob and I talked about this in the Quack Minute for those of you who tune into that via social media on the Oregon football channels, Dante Moore is a young guy who's still learning from Dylan Gabriel, but he's got a lot of experience now too. Good addition to that quarterback room. Uh, I'm excited to watch both Dylan Gabriel and Dante Moore and Austin Novosad and everybody else in that quarterback room moving forward. Dante Moore with the media after practice today. It wasn't necessarily a, a straight path, but somehow you got here. What was that uh, decision like from UCLA to come here and just kind of that process for you? Uh, I mean, you know, overall, I'm just blessed to be here as of right now, being, you know, playing under Coach Landing, uh, especially being around the guys out here in the, uh, in the locker room. But just, you know, departing from UCLA, like I said, you know, throughout the, throughout the year, I'm just blessed to even play college football at 18 years old, you know, as a true freshman. Learned a lot, made a lot of mistakes, but, you know, at the end of the day, all I can do is just learn. And really, I know kind of got the feeling of, you know, a lot of things weren't going our way. Felt like a little bit of the coaching staff was, you know, feeling, I had a feeling they're going to leave. And really, deep, deep, deep down the side there, I was just like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to, you know, get developed as best as I could. So I know, like, you know, Coach Kelly's gone now. You know, it took a little time after the season for him to leave. But I just wanted to get a new fresh start. You know, out of high school, I was first coming here. You know, many people say there's many reasons why I left, but the real reason why is Coach Dillingham left. You know, as a quarterback, your OC needs to be your best friend. And really, at the end of the day, when they took him, Coach Stein, I didn't know much of Coach Stein. Uh, you know, he came from UTSA. You know, we tried to build a relationship within a couple of weeks, but something told me to go to UCLA. But I'm glad to be back here in Eugene. You know, just blessed to be around these great football players and, you know, keep competing. How did you like the relationship with Will developed? Uh, Coach Stein, I mean, like I said, when we first met each other, you know, he gave me the vibe of, you know, relaxed, real smart, draw some things on the board, but, you know, a real family-like person. You know, he has, you know, he's a kid, you know, Joey, his son. Uh, like I say, you know, it just, you know, he's a family type of dad. He knows to, you know, take care of the quarterback room. Like I say, he's a really smart guy, calls great plays, you know, just understands how to develop a quarterback. He's played the position, you know, him just understanding, you know, certain routes, certain plays, we got to do things. But Coach Stein, I love him. I guess I'm, I'm glad to be under him. What about the timing of this opportunity for you, Dante, when, when Dylan was already committed to come here? Why was this good timing for you and how are you approaching the, the situation with him here as well? Uh, you know, DG, you know, he's been in college football, you know, quite some time now. And really when I first got here, like I said, no, you know, no cold shoulder, no bad blood at all. Like I said, I'm just thankful to be around him. He's taught me many things. I asked him many questions, we're always joking around. But really, like I said, just, you know, seeing him, seeing him, what he has done in college football, especially playing at Oklahoma against, you know, big games, just trying to see, you know, just ways I can learn. You know, we're all competing at the end of the day, but really he's just trying to better ourselves each day. But having Dylan to, to ask questions, communicate to him about what looks he likes, things like that, is just a blessing to have. When you say you want to be developed more and, and in a better position to do so, what are some of the things you want to develop on specifically? What are some of those things immediately that you're working on here this spring? Uh, really, you know, as a quarterback, just first, just having playmakers around you. I mean, just having, you know, like we have Tez, Gary, Trey, you know, Evan, you know, just came in. Like just having the playmakers around you and understanding how concepts work, you know, is getting taught the way of how to do things, you know, having a good front five to help protect you. But as a quarterback, I mean, you know, you got to have the mental battle already good. You know, going out into battle mentally, you got to be prepared. You know, having a staff, you know, a, you know, a defensive quarter, defensive coach, you know, Coach Landon comes to me, talks to me about looks that they do to help me learn. So I feel like here, just having the staff that we have, Coach Junior as receiver coach, help me break down some routes of the way they do things, help my timing out. I feel like here, I feel like everybody's locked in and really loves the game of football. So at the end of the day, I feel like we're all going to get developed. How valuable was that year last year for you in the terms of actually being able to make mistakes and get on the field and get these live reps? I mean, like at the end of the day, you know, of course, you don't want to, like I said, you know, example, everybody knows just throwing the picks, you know, pick sixes, things like that. Kind of relates back to my freshman year of high school. I remember my freshman year of high school, I threw 12 picks. You know, it was like, damn, like, what are you doing? But at the end of the year, my senior, I threw two picks. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just development. You know, college football, it's hard. Everybody's good, you know, especially playing at Utah or fans throwing things at you, just all types of stuff going on. But 
at the end of the day, I mean, you're going to learn. And I feel like being here, being around great guys, great front line, I mean, just I'm going to give Div up for sure. How much did the staff being, Dan being here, and the rest of the office of staff play a factor when you went into the portal? You were comfortable with a lot of these guys. How, how big of a factor was that where we were going to have to re-recruit you? I mean, kind of at the end of the day, uh, when I hit the portal, you know, I hit Coach Landon. Coach Landon texted me back. I kind of knew where I was going already. At the end of the day, like, out of high school, you know, if things, you know, if things went right, but we always don't know the right things. But if things went right, I would have been here right now after Boulder left, just, you know, he's still competing and everything like that. But just being back here, uh, like I said, the whole 23 class, I helped recruit on the office side of the ball. So me seeing Jerion, you know, Kyler upper class, but just seeing the guys I was just around, even in high school, is just like a true blessing. So just having the people here, just having the playmakers here, just having the staff is just amazing. I know at the end of the day, I'm going to get better. What did you text Dan when you went in the portal? Uh, I don't think I texted him. I think I called him. Uh, really just checking up on life. You know, at the end of the day, Coach Landon is going to be the coach that's going to be blowing your phone up, things like that. You know, you know, my mom, you know, sadly, you know, she had breast cancer. You know, I was fine through that throughout the season. You know, she got diagnosed with it during spring ball last year. So really the first couple of things he asked me was just checking up on my mother. You know, I had to take a medical flight to go see her. She's going through surgery, things like that. So just blessed that, you know, God has, you know, recovered her, you know, made sure that she was getting through a healthy recovery. But, I mean, he just checked up on me, laughed, joked around, got a visit out here, and I knew it was time to get back out. When you were committed in high school, obviously you've got an idea of what it's like to be, what it's going to be like to be an Oregon Duck. How are you actually here? Is it kind of lived up to those expectations? Yeah, I mean, it being out here, you know, it rained a lot, you know, these past couple of weeks, but I always knew that. I know the, uh, the springs and the summers here are really beautiful. But just being out here, you got the best facilities in the world, you got a great coaching staff, best playmakers out here on the field. Just have everything around here. You know, it's not LA. Can't go to Santa Monica. You know, I can't go on the beach, lay down. But I just know being out here, you know, football is you know the main thing. So being out here, just having you no know, distractions, just football, school, it's gonna help me at the end of the day. At the time that you made the decision to flip to UCLA, there was uncertainty about conference affiliation and the like, and personal relationships with the coaches that side. How much did this being part of the Big Ten and playing Michigan and Michigan yeah. State and that being part of this future here? How much did that help? make this decision easier for you. Yeah, even uh even when that the rumors were growing around that, you know, teams were going into the big ten, even when I was at UCLA, I just knew like just being able to being able to play back, you know, not three hours behind, you know, actually being in the big ten, playing at Michigan, things like that. But you know, this year we play at Michigan, I think the whole family's gonna be there. But it's just it's a big factor for sure. Just being from the Midwest and just being out there, having my family come out to my games and being out there just drive, not a flight, it's just gonna be beautiful. What are your personal goals kind of for this spring? My personal goal is, is really to build trust in the locker room. You know, coming in uh, many times, you know, as a quarterback, it's just you got to build a trust with the offensive side of the ball, especially even defense side of the ball, or the players in the locker room in general. You know, as a quarterback, like I said, many times I can say much, but you can't really talk to talk. You got to sometimes do the actual physical work. So being out here in practice, you know, out here going through the reps, you know, competition drills, things like that, just talking to the receiver. That's my biggest goal is to build trust with this team and really just better myself and build my relationship stronger with God. You like the competition? How do you go about that? So I'm sorry. Do you like the competition? Oh, yeah. Is that what fuels you? Because yeah, I mean, it's a pretty competitive room. Yeah, it is. Uh, competition, I mean, really is what you should enjoy. At the end of the day, you're going to better in yourself. You're better in the you know, people around you. But at the end of the day, like Urban Meyer just said out there, you know, it's just you got to put people in front of you. Don't be selfish. At the end of the day, we're going to be in the room, t you know, telling like, hey, DG, might start to read this way, then go through a cross, and then I might have a rep, and he'd be like, hey, check your eyes this time, next time. And just at the end of the day, we're just helping each other out. But when it comes to competition on the football field, we know to lock in and just be thankful to be playing football. It was great hearing from Dante Moore. Uh, transferred into Oregon this year. His story, he talk, talked about it a lot. Glad to have him in Eugene. I think he's happy to be here in Eugene. That's Dante Moore, Duck quarterback, meeting with the media after practice here today. Quick timeout when we come back. Switching gears to Oregon lacrosse. Jess Drummond, Oregon head coach, ahead of their trip to San Diego. Fighting for that postseason. We'll talk about that when we come back on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Dear Spring Showers, these tough Toyotas can handle whatever you got. The rugged Tacoma, Trail Ready 4Runner, and the versatile RAV4 Hybrid turn your puddles into playtime. For more, visit Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. As a local community credit union founded by teachers, OnPoint is committed to supporting the students and faculty at the University of Oregon. And on game day, we're right there with you. On the field, in the bleachers, and in the classrooms. Drop by our local branch today and discover the many ways On Point can help support your financial well-being. On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. 
Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. Dear Spring Showers, these tough Toyotas can handle whatever you've got. The rugged Tacoma, Trail Ready 4Runner, and the versatile RAV4 Hybrid turn your puddles into playtime. For more, visit Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Duck Insider, Duck Insider, Duck Insider continues after this timeout on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. The impact of a meal goes well beyond feeding our bodies because feeling full can sound like this. How did the interview go? I did it. I got the job. I can't believe it. And like this. Mom, I got first place at the science fair with my volcano project. That's amazing, sweetie. Congratulations. Because when people are fed, futures are nourished, and everyone deserves to live a full life. Join the movement to end hunger at feedingamerica.org slash act now. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you out, because only you can prevent wildfires. Hey, Assistant Smokey Bear, call me Papa Bear, because I'm grilling up dinner. <laughs> do you get it? Yes, good job. So, what should I do with all these coals? Don't just toss them out. Put them in a metal container, because those embers can start a wildfire. I understand. The stakes are high. Ha, 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 ha. Learn more at SmokeyBear.com. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Oregon Track and Field is on the road yet again this weekend, and it feels like now as we get into this time of year, there's always some split squads. In fact, the Brian Clay Invitational getting underway today for Duck Track and Field in Azusa, and then also in Long Beach, the Beach Invitational. What a great name. I mean, if you're naming an event and you can just go the Beach Invitational, not bad. So two events uh, going on this weekend for Oregon Track and Field. A lot of details available on GoDucks.com. Coming off a really, really successful first couple events for Duck Track and Field. The women checking in at number six in the national rankings. Outdoor track and field season officially here. Now, meanwhile, for Oregon lacrosse, so the Ducks got off to a great start in the non-conference season. Now at one and three in conference, they're sitting at seven and four overall. Yesterday, we talked with Jess Drummond, and the Ducks got their first conference win over UC Davis two weeks ago, and then a top 25-ranked USC team came into Pat Bay Field this weekend. The Ducks were neck and neck with them until the last couple minutes of the second quarter, the first half. Ducks were right there. USC closed on a 12-1 run. Oregon demonstrated in the first quarter and in the second quarter, I thought, that they could play with anybody. And I think Jess Drummond agrees. We talked with the Oregon head coach uh, yesterday here in the Country Financial Studio. They're traveling to San Diego State this Saturday at 1 o'clock, a critical one for the Ducks, trying to polish up that postseason resume, chatting with the head coach of Oregon Lacrosse. Jessica Drummond is here in the studio. Okay, so we have to take you a little bit inside the show. We record <laughs> these on Wednesdays. Coach Drummond came in sat down in this chair <laughs> because I was over on Scott's computer trying to fix one of the many technical issues we often have. She did a full examination of the <laughs> desk. Um, she was not impressed, no. particularly with the chair. So you're on your own today. <laughs> you're on your own. I got nothing. Uh, Jess Drummond is here, Oregon lacrosse head coach. Yeah, team get Joey Mack a new chair. I mean, I have a courtside chair right this over is, here. This is this is this is a great chair. So we this always, is very comfy to come visit, we, but but not that's that. why we put the comfy chair over there. You, both chairs should be comfy. You're doing well, a lot over there behind thank that you. desk. You know, here's the thing: this chair makes you sit on the edge of your seat. Yeah. Which is good in the broadcast realm. Like you want to sit up straight yes. and project your voice and all these things I tell young broadcasters. <laughs> but yeah, I don't have circulation in my legs. <laughs> yeah, why I didn't would love you that. need that? No. Is that good in athletics? No. Yeah. 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 So what's been up? What have you been up to? Oh, I went fishing last night. So we talked about this before <laughs> also. So I always ask Coach, like, hey, what do you want to talk about today? And she's like, never ask me that question ever no. again. And then what comes from that? We learned that you went fishing and caught a massive trout yesterday. Yep, sure did. Yeah. I and it's on the socials, right? It is. At Dr. Drummond on the Instagram. Which, by the way, <laughs> great, great handle. Just 
Did yeah. you come up with that all by yourself? Um, I, we threw out a bunch of ideas, but you know those sports info people, they know what's up. Duck Drummond. Yeah. Yeah. They were great. It. Uh, it was great. How many times in your life did you hear a lot of phrases about like beat the drum? Yeah, that was uh, yeah. like on one of my senior day photos, poster photos. Sure. I don't. Even, I got to be honest. I don't even know where that comes from because that's just not. I just don't think about drums. Well, Drummond. Yeah. No, I, like, I, I know right. where it comes in my name, <laughs> but I don't know where Beat the Drum comes from. I don't either. I have no idea. I, I, I don't can put know. that much together. Thanks, Joey Mac. I don't know the origin <laughs> of the story. Uh, look, all, all I know is uh, that we always have something new and exciting <laughs> for you whenever we talk lacrosse. Great shirt choice today, by the way. Oh, yeah. Got a rep. So Fellow yeah. pro duck. Yeah. Right? Yes. Yeah. I was wearing it. Someone was like, asked what Brenda. I was like, Sabrina. She went here. You know her? <laughs> you wanted to fight him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I did. I was like, well, uh, you should just walk off campus. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit of lacrosse, but I do want to go a little off the field with you. Okay. So a week ago, uh, first time as a head coach, you attended the scholarship oh. endowment yes. reception. So for those who are unfamiliar, uh, every year, it was now the 13th annual uh, all of the student athletes who are receiving an endowed scholarship, we actually put on a reception. They get to sit down and meet many of the folks that are generous to give to the scholarship endowment program. A lot of named scholarships, of course, across not just the U of O. We're celebrating it at the U of O, but that's common, right? Across all of uh, Division One, Division Two athletics in general. Well, you attended it as a student athlete, yep, and now attending it as a head coach. Mm -hmm. What was that like for you? So fun. I ran into the donor that was our sponsor when I was an athlete. Cool. So that was so cool. I was like, what? He came up and he sponsors some of lacrosse athletes right now, too. And he was like, just drum. And I was like, Kelly Reed, this is crazy. Huh. Crazy. He was just so excited to see me there. Asked about my sister. So it was really special to go through that. And you hosted. You're fantastic. That was a new bonus for me this year of attending as a coach is you hosted. Thanks for lying. MC. That was really nice of you. No, you were great. I chuckled for you. Thanks. And yeah. We got direct eye so contact. And I was like, my laugh is very distinct. To hear it, was, you know it. Jess sat <laughs> in the front row. Yep. True story. Sat <laughs> in the front row. I don't, what did I say? I said something that oh, was I like, don't. oh, no. It was like I, I welcomed everybody. <laughs> oh, yeah. To, so, you know, like you welcome people to the event. And normally it's like, oh, yeah. yeah. You know, like the polite golf clap. <laughs> And I pause for a second, and then it's just in the front row, just like, yeah! And President Jones was, he had to the same. He's like, yeah, 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 yeah. President was like, yeah. And I was like, great. Carl and I go way back, and he was fired up for us. He yeah. cheered really loud for lacrosse. So, yeah. New U of O president, uh, Carl Schultz, big yeah. lacrosse fan now. Yeah. He was yeah. guest coach. Yeah. Right? He was. He yeah. walked in, he was like, coach. Everyone called him coach. Yeah. Good. It was great. Coach That's, Carl. Yeah, that makes yeah. sense. All right. Now, to what happened on the field. If yes. I took. Just the first quarter and a half. Yeah. And broke it down. What did you see from your team? Then we can talk about the rest later. Sure. <laughs> Just throw it, throw it to the side. No, a as no. a coach, I know that yes. you're not going to do that. But I no, want to know, like, how against a, a really good team, yeah. that felt like high-level lacrosse yes. watching it, at least for an amateur. Definitely. We were super locked in and very intentional with all of our ball movement, how we saw the net, how we finished our shots, how we took so many shots. We just played a lot with confidence. We did a great job on the draw. They, like, cheers to them. They have a really good draw team. So us being able to compete hard in that first half was awesome with them to get the ball, get those possessions, and finish it on our end. And we had some great stops on defense. So we really definitely – took advantage of our opportunities and hung in there for a long time. Them is USC, by yes. the way. It was a 19-8 to 8 decision last week. But I wanted to ask you about, like, in football, for example, the middle eight gets discussed a lot. Like, mm -hmm. the last four of the first half, the first four yeah. of, of the second half. That felt, at least to me, like where it turned. Is that as valuable in lacrosse? Like, do you talk about that, like going into a half and then coming out of a half? How big of a deal is that? Yeah, I think just how you start each quarter pretty much sets the tone right. and how you can bounce back. You know, our game is so similar to a lot of sports where it's just a game of runs. Like, yeah. can you get a run? Can you stop a run? And how do we kind of bounce out of those moments where it's not in your favor for a run? Yeah. So takeaways then uh, yeah. from part one of the game to part two of the game as a coaching yes. staff. What are you working on moving forward? Just that confidence through the full game. Like To me, I wanted them to be proud of that first half and carry that into the second half. I think we got a little nervous because they got a couple goals scored against us, but that's my reminder of like teams are going to score goals against us. They're just going to. There's going to be no possible way of it being a zero score. Um, and so we just got to recognize like it's okay and still have that confidence, that resilience, that swag to still get the job done. It's mental. Yeah. 
definitely. Especially against a team that's number 21. You're like, oh, they should be beating us. I'm like, yeah, but just look at the first half. We, right. We're hi hanging right there with them. So if we just pull a full 60 minutes, we're – we're golden. I feel like consistency is something everyone's looking for, but it's maybe the most difficult thing to attain yeah. in sports. Because yeah. all the other opposition is doing is trying to make you inconsistent, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. So Just you're rattle. Looking, yeah, kind of rock it. Make it a little chaotic. Switch it up. Looking for consistency coming mm -hmm. up. Uh, Jess Drummond joining us. Oregon lacrosse now on the road. San Diego yep. State. One o'clock. What's the scouting report? Do I just, again, I think I talked about this last time, maybe just focusing on us. Like, I just really want us to go into this game, have that confidence, have that swag, be alpha, and just get the job done from a full 60 minutes. Alpha so, is your favorite word, I think. Now. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I just want every female athlete to feel alpha in their life, on and off the field. I like it. Yeah. You played at San Diego State before in your career? Yeah, I did. Way yeah. back when. I think it hailed that game. Which Wait. was Yes, it hailed in San Diego. And I remember coming back. I think Lauren Plum was from around that area, and she was like, dude, it never hails. In, in San Diego, and I was like, yeah, no, it did in our game. Yeah. And it was not a great, it was not a great game. Lauren Plum, yeah. <laughs> I, Throwback would, volleyball. She would be the expert. Yeah. Arguably the greatest setter in the in the program's history. Yeah. Um, Just saw her for alumni weekend on, in the fall. She came back. That's sweet. It was cool. That's sweet. So, you know, I was wondering, too, like, when with some of the road venues, you know, has how much has it changed in when you yeah. were playing versus now? Like, right. do you, are, are the fields still the same? Do you kind of have <laughs> a do you have a feel for like this this is different at this facility? I don't know. I was kind of yeah. wondering now going on. UC Davis felt the same in the fall. Stanford was the same. I mean, we had I had not been back to Stanford since the MPSF MPSF oh. championship, so that was really cool. Of like, oh yeah, last time I was here, we. We, we won. Won the whole thing. Yeah, won the whole thing against yeah. Stanford. That was pretty cool. Anybody who was listening <laughs> on the radio, that was a wink that she did <laughs> right there, just to remind everybody yeah. yep. of that of that conference title. <laughs> well wink, done. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah, well, we'll do it again. We can get there. Yeah. Yep. So Stanford's the same. I haven't been to San Diego since, so this will be the first time going back too. And then Colorado and Arizona, they're new, so I don't. Right. I don't really know. Yeah. Back at home uh, in a couple weeks. Yes. Uh, so Alpha. That's my takeaway. What else should fans know? Anything? For this game on Saturday? Whatever's on your mind. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, I am an open book for you. I mean, look, we, we talked about, truthfully, I'm, I'm really glad, though, that we could talk about the scholarship. And oh, it, yeah, like, so special. So special. Yeah, that's a big deal. And now I, I know. know that you do not like my chair. Yeah. Cool. And you're a fantastic MC. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks. Again, you're nice to lie. I would never lie. I also can't fake a laugh. Like it's loud, and if it's if you're being funny, I will laugh. Right. The, so the the real question though is, was <laughs> she laughing at me no. <laughs> no. or with me? Yes. See. Now I'll never tell. Right. <laughs> right. Don't have to lie if you don't say anything. Yeah. Jess yeah. Drummond, a hey, uh, best of luck Thanks. in San Diego. Thanks for Fired always up. taking the time and joining us. And always. I'm gonna uh, sit in that chair. I'm gonna move over. <laughs> <sighs> Just lean back a little. Just get a little comfy. It's a, it's a different. Hang out a bit. I don't like it. Yeah. I can't sway and swivel. We need to find you a perfect chair then. Uh, a comfy chair, good posture. Yeah. And I, where you I, don't get dead legs. Just drum and Oregon Macross <laughs> head coach. Sign off. Thanks Ed. for being here. <laughs> She's great. And, okay, this is true. So we, we, we talked yesterday. I come in today. There's a new chair! Like, look. And look, it's all, like, fancy and comfortable. Guys, I can feel my legs. Jess Drummond, slow clap in the studio. I just... This is all Coach Drummond. I have never been more comfortable uh, sitting... At this desk, all thanks to Jess Drummond. I, literally, I, we come in today, and Scott and I are like, just love it. It's a great day to be a duck. Thanks to Jess Drummond. Oregon lacrosse on the road, San Diego State this weekend. And what this all means, look, if they get a win there, the, the, the Pac-12 tournament is within – 
striking distance. Still got Arizona State and Colorado before the Pac-12 tournament, but got to get a couple conference wins here. That's what the Ducks are looking for down the stretch. One and three in conference, seven and four overall under first-year head coach Jess Drummond. When we come back, we're going to talk a little bit of baseball. The Ducks got a bounce-back victory and more Oregon football conversation still to come. It's Duck Insider. Keep it here on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Dear spring showers, these tough Toyotas can handle whatever you got. The rugged Tacoma, trail-ready 4Runner, and the versatile RAV4 Hybrid turn your puddles into playtime. For more, visit Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Hey, Duck fans, we're all about protecting our home turf here in Eugene. You should do the same for your home with Country Financial Insurance. Most home insurance doesn't account for inflation, but with Country Financial, yours can. If something happens to your home, make sure you can rebuild the same house in the same place. Call a local representative or 866-COUNTRY and get a solid defense for your home. Home insurance policies issued by Country Mutual Insurance Company, Country Casualty Insurance Company, or Country Preferred Insurance Company, Bloomington, Illinois. Property must meet aging condition requirements, which vary by state. Dear spring showers, these tough Toyotas can handle whatever you got. The rugged Tacoma, trail-ready 4Runner, and the versatile RAV4 hybrid turn your puddles into playtime. For more, visit Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Duck Insider, your home for the latest news on Oregon athletics on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. Adopt U.S. Kids presents What to Expect When You're Expecting. A teenager learning the lingo. GOAT, G-O-A-T, acronym, stands for greatest of all time. As in spaghetti sandwiches for dinner? They're my fave. Dad, you're the GOAT. You don't have to speak teen to be a perfect parent. Thousands of teens in foster care will love you just the same. Visit AdoptUSKids.org. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Adopt US Kids, and the Ad Council. What is dedication? My biggest fear in the middle of my addiction was that my kids wouldn't have a father. And I started thinking, you know what? This isn't my story. I definitely had to become a better man to be a better father. It's important to me that my kids are empowered and truly believe that if, if they can think it, they can do it. That's dedication. Visit fatherhood.gov to hear more. Brought to you by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services and the Ad Council. We're back on Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. Joey Mack with you here in the Country Financial Studio. So last night, Duck Baseball, two nights ago, gave up a seven-run first inning before the Ducks could even come to the plate. The opposite happened in this game. Ducks got out of it thanks to a great start in the first inning from Ian Umwatt. He looked good early. And then Bryce Betcher let off the game with a double. Bennett Thompson knocked him in with a base hit up the middle. Jacob Walsh then hit a home run, the first of four home runs for the Ducks and two from Jacob Walsh. Oregon scored four runs in the first inning. Ducks eventually ran away with this game. It was never really in question. Thanks be thanks to those uh, long balls, an 11-4 win for the Ducks, but also thanks to a great pitching performance from Ian Umlott. More on that in a moment. Bryce Betcher went two for four. Bennett Thompson, his batting average went from about 270 to 307 because he went four for five in the contest. Jacob Walsh, two for three with two home runs. The career leader in Oregon, alt, at Oregon all time, home runs. 34 now because he hit one in the first and one in the second. He had five RBI after the second inning. Yeah, ridiculous. I was even starting to think, will he catch Jack Martyr? Jack Martyr, current assistant coach at Oregon, has the record for runs batted in in a game. Eight. Thought Jacob Walsh had a shot at it yesterday when he had five after the second inning. The Ducks, though, also, even when Jeffrey Hurd and Drew Smith, the four five hitters, went 0 for 3 and 0 for 4, respectively, the Ducks got some length in their lineup because Chase Meggers in the seven hole went 2 for 4. Maddox Maloney just keeps hitting. The freshman's hitting 469 on the season. And I know limited at bats, he started out the year hurt. 469, and he's been playing consistently the last three weeks. You got to take notice of what the Springfield, Oregon native is doing. And Carter Grade went one for four in the bottom of the order in the number nine hole. The Ducks also, though, I say the offense, they needed to sustain it. They got it going a little bit better. Four runs in the first. And then I thought maybe one of the critical moments in the game. 
Sac State comes back to get three in the top half of the second, and you're going, oh, shoot. Is it going to be one of those kind of games? You're starting to get a little antsy if you're the broadcaster in the booth. Well, then the Ducks come back for three in the bottom half of the second thanks to that Jacob Walsh home run. He hit one to right field that not only cleared the uh, outfield fence, it cleared the ballpark fence, went into the parking lot. Then he hit another one the opposite way. Jacob Walsh did. So the Ducks got those three runs right back to have a 7-3 to three lead going to the third. Sac State got one in the fourth, but then the Ducks got two in the sixth and two in the eighth. They extended the lead. Mark Wasikowski's talked a lot about wanting to extend the lead, allowed guys like Matthew Grabman and Turner Spoljarek to pitch an inning, but Ian Umlaut deserves huge praise. He's now 2-0. He made his first career start after 20-plus relief appearances in his Oregon career. All he did is have a season long in innings pitched for an Oregon starter. Seven innings of work, five hits, four runs. They were all earned, and a lot of them came actually on, like, flares to the outfield. He didn't give up a lot of hard contact to this team in Sac State, who hit the Ducks pretty doggone well yesterday, or two days ago, I'm sorry. Mike Friend gave up seven runs, and Mike Friend had put together back-to-back -back quality starts before the Hornets got to him on Tuesday night. Umlaut walked one, and he struck out nine. Good outing for me and Umlaut, right? If Mike Friend can get back to the Mike Friend, maybe that was just a bad outing, right? It happens. If Mike Friend gets back to where he was last week even, and if Ian Umlaut can replicate doing that, boy, what a job. Ducks needed some length. They've been a little banged up in the bullpen. They got the length they needed, especially when you play the two midweek games it really taxes your pitching staff, right? Tuesday game is common. Tuesday and Wednesday game, not so common. Usually a couple weeks a year you have that schedule. Taxes your bullpen. Every college baseball team is built to win a three-game series, right? And then the really good ones can also win a regional setting. Now, in a regional setting, you could just go 3-0. and Every now and then you got to play four games, five games in a regional Ducks are going to need that pitching depth, and, and I thought they got it last night in a big-time way. A slow start in one game, a fast start in the next. Here's what I'll say about Mark Wasikowski's teams. In his tenure here at Oregon, it seems like every time the Ducks have a bit of a dud of a game, a game where they don't like the result, Waz's teams always seem to respond, don't they? Like, Think back last year to the Ducks playing UC San Diego. Long conversation the next day after that loss. Long conversation pregame. Ducks weren't on the field as early as they usually are, and what was said in that team meeting will stay amongst the team because that's the kind of team meeting that it was. And then the Ducks a couple years ago just go on an absolute tear after that. Sometimes you learn more after a loss than you do after a win. I'm not saying that that's what happened two days ago, but what I'm saying is that Mark Wasikowski's teams, in his tenure as the head coach, every time they have a rough one, it seems like they always respond. The Ducks are now 23-9, and nine, and USC is in town tomorrow at 5 o'clock. 4.45 pregame show. Why does that matter? That matters because USC and Oregon are both sitting – depending on how you're looking at the standings based on winning percentage and loss column and everything else, these are the two teams that are at three and four in the conference standings. And they're both about a half game out of first place, depending on, again, if you look at winning percentage, total games played. USC and Oregon State have played one less game than everybody else in the Pac-12. Some teams have played more than others because there's bye weeks in the Pac-12. Ducks already had their bye weeks, so they've played less games than some others. But the team that is a half game above Oregon – is Arizona. The Ducks have a series win over Arizona already. Another team that's right near the Ducks in the Pac-12 standings, Oregon State. Ducks play them in two weeks in Corvallis. Then it's USC. A USC team that does not have a home field this year and lately has been on a surge. Ducks might be getting them at the wrong time. But if Oregon could get a series win over the Trojans, stay above them in the Pac-12 standings, and then you've got Oregon State coming up, Ducks are hunting for a Pac-12 championship, and they're right there in it right now. Come on out to PK Park. Animal House night tomorrow. 
I will not be in a toga. Maybe Caden will be. You will be in a toga. Good. Caden's also, you're directing, right? Caden will be directing. Caden's one of our interns. He's directing Duck and Cider today. Caden will be directing our broadcast on the Oregon Sports Network and the Oregon live stream with Quack Video. So the entire production team in, in togas, that's what I'm hearing? That, that's what I'm hearing? Uh, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much the entire crew. That's a receipt yeah. right there. Okay, we've got that on record. That's recorded. Well, you know, also – PBR is in Eugene. Yeah! So, cowboy boots and togas? I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll see. Yeah. PBR, for those unfamiliar, a uh, pro bull riding. Yes. Um, they're at Matthew Knight Arena. Okay. And the control room, by the way, that puts on all of these uh, broadcasts for us is at Matthew Knight Arena. So, so you're saying there's a chance. There might be some great social media about this, but it's Animal House Night. I can tell you that. It's Animal House Night at PK Park. Also, that's on Friday. Bark in the Park on Sunday. Everybody has told me I got to bring my dog, Henry. Look, I'm just telling y'all. I made, I don't think it was a mistake, but I made a miscalculation because when he was young, I would take him to the field, and instead of just throwing a ball, I brought my baseball fungo bat, and I would just crack the ball out into the distance, and Henry would take off and go get it. Well, now I can't take him anywhere near a baseball field because he hears the bat, and he's like, go get ball. I, I don't think it was a mistake. I, I, I think it might have been a miscalculation because now I really can't bring him to Bark in the Park. He's the greatest dog, but there's no way that he could sit in the broadcast booth Without jumping out the window, trying or trying to scratch his way out of the door, trying to go and, and chase some baseball. So, everyone who has a dog that that is uh, more apt for that setting, I hope to see all of you at PK Park. It's supposed to be pretty good weather this weekend, and USC. Look, this could very well be one of the decisive series in the conference race. The Ducks have lost one conference series. No, excuse me. The Ducks have lost one weekend series and no conference series all year. This is one that may determine a Pac-12 championship. Ducks win this series. They're sitting in the top third or maybe even in first place in the Pac-12 standings. This is a huge game. It's a huge, huge game. Talk a little bit more about that tomorrow. Baseball game day tomorrow. Ducks are now 23-9. and nine. Got that bounce back. When we return, Oregon softball also in action in, in a midweek matchup last night. Details on the Ducks win when we come back on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. As a local community credit union founded by teachers, On Point is committed to supporting the students and faculty at the University of Oregon. And on game day, we're right there with you on the field, in the bleachers, and in the classrooms. Drop by our local branch today and discover the many ways On Point can help support your financial well-being. On Point Community Credit Union. People are the point. Federally insured by NCUA. Equal housing opportunity. At Shadow Hills Country Club, we're more than just an award-winning golf course and practice facility. Our events team offers all-inclusive event pricing that allows us to take care of all the details while you enjoy your event. Our indoor and outdoor venues offer you a wide variety of fully staffed options that put the focus on you. From weddings to business and social events, at Shadow Hills Country Club Events Center, you get the benefits of a resort atmosphere and amenities in a peaceful country setting. Just minutes from downtown Eugene. Call for a tour today or visit Shadow Hills Events com. This is Duck Insider. Duck Insider on the Oregon Sports Network from Learfield. This is your captain. We are going to be experiencing some slight turbulence. Please fasten your... Oh, hold on. Just got a video of my cat. Imagine the pilot of an airplane was as confident as you are texting and driving. Seems kind of crazy when you put it like that. Visit StopTextStopRex.org. A message brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, Project Yellow Light, and the Ad Council. I'm Chris Jackamick. I serve in the United States Air Force, and I've deployed three times. So in 2017, I was serving as an Air Force First Sergeant. Our motto in that role is my job is people, everyone is my business. But unfortunately, in that year, I would lose my own brother, Lance Corporal Adam Jackamick, to suicide. The majority of veteran suicides are from guns. 
I store my weapons securely, not only for myself, but for my family. Store all your guns securely. Help stop suicide. My service never stops. Brought to you by End Family Fire and the Ad Council. We're back on Duck Insider, presented by On Point Community Credit Union. I'm Joey Mack here with you in the Country Financial Studio. Duck baseball with a win on the diamond at home. Oregon softball with a win on the diamond on the road last night. Number 20 Ducks scored four runs in the first inning, four more in the seventh, and in between leaned on some elite-level defense for a 9-4 to decision over Grand Canyon Wednesday night. Grand Canyon is a team that is leading its conference, and the Ducks won the midweek 9-4. to Ducks scored four in that first frame, and I tell you, it set the tone. Oregon's offense, when they get out to a lead with Oregon's pitching and defense, they are tough to beat. Alyssa Daniel homered twice in the game, drove in four runs, was on the receiving end of a number of highlight reel defensive plays in the field. Ducks are now 23-13, and successfully opened the four-game road trip to Arizona. Coach Lombardi said that this week feels a little bit like a regional. Even with the day off in between today, they're playing at Arizona in a top 25 series tomorrow you got to treat that like a regional. A Grand, Grand Canyon's the kind of team that would end up in a regional with the Ducks and a team of similar caliber to Arizona, right? The one and two seeds, the way that things work in the regionals, those are usually two pretty good squads that are playing each other. Regional of four teams, right? I like that mentality. And the Ducks at 5 o'clock tomorrow in Tucson on Pac-12 Network Night. Your he has got the hometown call on KWVA, the student radio station here at the University of Oregon. That's a good win for the Ducks, and Alyssa Daniel has been playing really, really well of late. Kailu Shar arguably made the game's top two defensive plays in the late innings. With no outs and a runner on first in the bottom of the fifth, a sinking line drive was hit to left field, and Lushar ranged far to her left to catch it on the fly, then threw a strike to Alyssa Daniel, the aforementioned great defender herself, to double up the runner at first base. Lushar had has two hits that bounced over the third baseman in this game also. That hard dirt in Arizona really plays well for Lushar, a slap hitter, right? Hitting well over 400 this season. She said post game that she just loves that hard dirt in Arizona. So if you're the Wildcats, you can't play back, but if you play in, she's going to smack it over your head. I mean, that's a tough job, coach. Kyle Lushar, really, really impressive. Also of note, with a home run and a career-high three stolen bases, Ariel Carlson, one of just four players in the country this season with 11 or more home runs and 13 or more stolen bases. That's an impressive metric. We'll see you tomorrow on Duck Insider. Babes, what are you doing? What? I'm just mowing the lawn. No, it's blazing hot and dry out here. Don't you remember? Smokey Bear says. Avoid using power equipment when it's windy or dry. Where'd you learn this? Oh, it's on. Smokeybear.com.